Hi everyone, this is Josh at TechPodge, and today I'm going to do a quick video on Adobe Illustrator 2024. So if you're a complete beginner or you simply want a quick review of the Illustrator 2024, this is the video for you. So here's the starting page in Illustrator. You can create a new file here or you can go over to more presets. And the presets are used to create your artboards according to the end product that you're creating, whether it's a postcard or an A4 or a uh, iPad Pro. So if I click on more presets, you can see here that all of it's neatly organized under mobile, web, print, film and video, art and illustrations. So if I go back to mobile, for example, I could pick iPad Pro, and I could also choose one of these templates below if I wanted to, but I'm just gonna go with a blank artboard for an iPad Pro. And, art, and an artboard, by the way, is simply the space that you're gonna put your artboard on uh, per your end product. So I'm designing for an iPad Pro, so I'm gonna create that artboard. And the width and the height the pixels unit has already been all selected. Vertical orientation has been selected. And RGB color has also been pre-selected. And RGB, by the way, in case you don't know, is always used for digital art, anything that's gonna appear on a digital screen or the internet. CMYK is gonna be used for anything that's gonna be printed. So these presets work. I'm gonna create that. And now I've got an artboard in the Illustrator application itself. Here is the artboard that I've just created per the presets. And you can see here in this interface, you've got tools on the left-hand side here main menu headings up top here. On the right-hand side, you've got important grouped features on different panels, properties panel, layers panel, uh, and so on. So if I go up here, you can see under the menu headings under Illustrator, you can ch choose your preferences here, you can quit here. Under file, you can actually save your work here, export it, which I'll show you more about later, and print it, okay? And you can also create your workspace here. So you can also choose a workspace that you would like to work with. So Essentials works for many beginners because that's probably the simple, most simplified workspace. And this is just going to be the workspace with the common tools that you'll need, that you'll need, whether it's web or topography or tracing, etc. So if I go back here, I'm going to create a simple square by clicking and holding down here and selecting the rectangle tool. So once I select that, I simply click and drag, and now I've got a rectangle. And the pink line simply shows me that it's kept the proportions. I'm going to let go of that, change the color here to red, for example, and I'm going to change the stroke. Uh, which is simply the outside border. As you can see here, it's increasing as I click these lines. This outside border is now in black 21 point. If I go back here and I click on this again, you can see I've got other options. Simply click and hold down. Now I can choose a, a circle and drag my circle like so, click and drag, and now it's a circle. And it's defaulted to red and black, but I want to change that to a different color. So I'm going to change this to green, and now I'm going to go back and actually create another color. So I'm going to click here, and I'm gonna choose the polygon tool. And now if I click and drag, it's now creating a poly polygon. I'm gonna change this color as well to uh, orange. So if I go back up here and I click on, if I use the direction selection tool, I can click on this to select this object with the selection tool. And as you can see, all objects are made up of anchors and paths. And if I zoom in, it's a bit easier to see. So I'm gonna zoom in to this object with command plus. And now if I click on this object, you can see here with the direct selection tool, the direct selection tool, I can now double click on this anchor point and change the shape of the object like so. Simply double click on it with the direct selection tool and now I can change this object very easily. You can do that on a circle as well and you get handlebars. So if I double click on an anchor within a circle, you can see I can now get handlebars. I can also move it with the anchor point and I can also grab the handlebar itself to change the path between the anchor points and as a path between all anchor points. So if I zoom out here, you can now see I've got three objects and I can export these. If I want to work in Photoshop, I can go down here and click on export, export as, and now I can actually export this to a PNG. For example, I can export it to a JPEG, into an Autodesk file or to a Photoshop file to work on it in those applications. I'm gonna cancel out of that and I'm also going to show you how to save really quickly here. You click on File and Save As. You can save actually to the default Adobe Illustrator type within the Creative Cloud or on your computer. But I'm going to choose on my computer. And if I go there, you can see it's going to, it's going to default to Adobe Illustrator.ai file type. And you can also choose a PDF, for example. So uh, I hope you've liked this video. It's been a very quick video. Hopefully you found it helpful. Please give me a like if you learned something. And please subscribe because I'm going to publish many more videos on all the other uh, Adobe programs in the Creative Cloud. So I hope to see you soon and many thanks for joining. Bye.